we're going to be wrapping it up our, 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 our series, our Hand of Your Business series, our, our series on stewardship. We're going to be wrapping it up today, but uh, it, it's bittersweet because, you know, now that we understand we are stewards, now we've got to get to work. How many of you guys understand that? When we understand that we've got business to handle, we've now got to get to work. That's the reality of being a steward. And I want to get into it today, uh, kind of where we left off last week. If you missed last week's message, you got to go back and hear it. It's on any one of our platforms, so you can check that out. Uh, we, we started talking last week about the fact that, uh, yes, we are stewards, which means that we have to take care of and make whatever we've been given grow. Okay, remember last week's teaching, what was it? Make it grow. Okay, we've got to make it grow. Whatever God has put on our hands, we've got to make it grow. And by make it grow, what we're saying is we've got to make it better. We've got to make it more fruitful. We've got to, we've got to make it more meaningful. There's got to be increase in whatever God has given us. And we talked about the steward, the, 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 the parable of the talents, right? And many of us are very familiar with that story. And the parable of the talents basically talks about three people who were entrusted something. And with what they were entrusted, they were asked to take care of it and do something with it. Okay, master left, came back. The one who was given five made five more. The one who was given two made two more. And the one who was given one didn't do anything with it. He did nothing with it. Out of fear, out of lack of knowledge, whatever the case may be, he didn't do anything with it. But we didn't spend so much time about what the master's response is. And I want to talk to us about that today. So the one who had one, he took it away, he gave it to the others, and he called them lazy and wicked. Lazy and wicked. Now, I'm not going to focus on that today because I like to focus on the positive. What about the ones that had the five and what about the ones that had the two? What did God say about them? If you, didn't, if you don't remember the story, if you weren't with us last week, go back and check it out. It's in Matthew chapter 25. And what he says to the ones with the five and the ones with the two, the ones that made it grow, the ones that produced, the master replied this in Matthew 25, 21. He says, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. And that's not even where I want to focus on. Here's where I want to focus on. Come and share your master's happiness. Come and share your master's happiness. The message today I've titled called The Master's Delight. Handle your business. The title is called your master, The Master's Delight. There's all kinds of, uh, of, 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 of songs that... That popped up into my head <laughs> just by the title alone. I'm an old school guy, you know what I mean? So I started looking back at certain songs and certain lyrics, and, you know, I'm not going to do that, but, you know, <laughs> the, 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 just, just think about the title name for all the old school people. Think about it, the master's delight, you know? Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. No, we're not going to go there. <laughs> Come on, Max, you don't know nothing about that. No, no, you don't know nothing about that. No, it's all good. <laughs> oh, man. But so we're going to talk about today about the master's delight because the last few words when he talked about the good steward was come and share your master's happiness. And there's something so profound about that, and I don't hear us talking about that enough. And I want to talk about those two things. Come and share your master's happiness. There's two things that we really need to focus on here. Number one, the nature of the master. We need to understand the nature of God to be able to understand the joy or the sharing that we have in his happiness. So, so let's recognize who is the master. Somebody's supposed to say show enough, and, and none of y'all going to get that. But who is the master? Who knows that? Man, y'all need, need to get some old school classics, man. Who is the master? We got to recognize who is the master. Why? Because we need to learn to handle our business because he's the one that's given it to us to handle we are handling things that belong to God. Now, this is a tough truth for you guys, okay? I know this is a tough truth because it was a tough truth for me to understand. Here's the truth. It's not mine. It belongs to God. If you're, if you're taking notes, take down these notes because this is going to be just real. you got to settle these things in your hearts right now. If you can't settle these truths in your heart, it's going to be hard for us to handle what God wants us to handle, okay? Let me say that again. It's not mine. It belongs to God. This is the reason why we do what we do, because it's not ours. It belongs to God. The whole reason why we need to be good stewards, it's not just because we get a benefit from handling what God's given us. It's because God gave it to us. It's not mine. It belongs to God. 
We read it in the parable of the talents. He's going to come back and he's going to ask for an account. He's going to ask, what did you do with this? What did you do with that? And we didn't talk much about this last week, but the reality is it's not mine. It belongs to God. We saw it in the parable. We saw the master come back and give accounts. He said, what did you do with what I gave you? It belongs to him. And someday, all of us will have to give an account to God. So let me break this down doctrinally so we got the good theological basis here. Say this with me. My life is not my own. I mean, there's all kinds of songs up in this song, in this one for the old school. What, what? My life is not my own. Come on, Vic. Man, you ain't singing it. Come on. Give it all. I give myself. I give yeah, I myself to you. We got, we got all the my old school songs say, my, my life is not my own. To you I belong. First Corinthians chapter 6. Just keep singing the other line. Just go. Just, just. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. Turn to the person as you say, you are not your own. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Our lives are not even our own. How many of you guys remember the scripture where it says that for those of you guys who try to keep your life, you will lose it. But those of you guys who lose your life for my name's sake will gain it. Our lives are not our own. Okay? So our very lives, at some point, we've got to give them back to God. How many of you guys know that? At some point, we've got to go back. Okay? At some point, we've got to give an account. So what we do with our lives is important. How we handle and steward our lives matters because it's not ours. It's not mine. Who does it belong to? God. My possessions are not my own. Can you say that? Some of y'all are like, that's fine. I ain't got much anyway. But for everybody who has much or for everybody who plans to have much, you got to settle this in your heart right now. My possessions are not my own. Everything is his. This is the hard truth. I get it, because you've been working so hard to get yours. Yes or no? I thought this series was about handling your business. I'm handling my business. Yeah, but we handle our business because it's really about his business. My possessions are not my own. Psalm 24, verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Again, my possessions are not my own we got to let, let our hearts settle into this truth. Why? Because he owns it. Some of us, have you ever pondered everything that's around us? Everything that we have came from him? It sounds real good uh, from, 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 a, from a theoretical standpoint, but have you ever looked at it from a reality standpoint? That everything that exists, everything that ever exists, exists because he created it, because he made it? The seats that we're sitting on exist because he created it. He said, no, that's not true. X company manufactured it. But where did the materials come to make the seats? See, it would be easier if the seats were wooden because then we know, oh, the trees outside, they were cut down. Somebody fashioned it. But how many of you guys understand that even the plastic and the rubber on the seats comes from God's creation? The plastic and, and, and the rubber, the car that you guys drove in, let, let's start there. The car that you guys pulled up in was fashioned out of God's earth was fashioned out of what God gave. Everything that is exists because he allowed it to exist. The rubber on the tires, where did it come from? It comes from the tree, from the latex that comes from the tree that has the rubber elements that they then take out, formulate, and make rubber from it. The metal of the vehicle comes from the ore of the ground. How many of you guys understand what I'm saying? The leather that you sit on comes from the animals that God created. If you look around, we get so caught up in the society with everything that we have, and we tend to forget that just because it doesn't look like nature doesn't mean it didn't come from nature. How many guys understand what I'm saying? Everything that God created, everything that rather that exists, God created. And we have to understand that if it comes from Him, it's ultimately going to come back to Him. And we're going to have to give an account. What do we do with what he gave us? I realized this at the end of last service. And we've been talking about what God's given us, what God's given us. And what if we don't know what God's given us? What if we don't know the fact that he gave it? It wasn't because he gave it to us, but because he wants it back. And he wants it back well. With increase, preserved, taken care of. Here's something I had to learn. And, and I think this is something we have to learn in our lives. We have to learn that although he created it, he gives it. The reality is, is that um, we manage it, but he directs it. How many of you guys understand that? He directs the, 
feet of the, of the path of the righteous. Okay? We manage that path, but he directs it. So when we talk about handling your business, we're talking about how are you handling the, the things that God has given you. He, we manage it, but he directs it. How many of you have ever had something in your life? That should be everybody. Raise your hand, please. Because you got, I mean, you got a seat to sit on right now, if nothing else. <laughs> okay. You guys got clothes. I, I see no naked people in here, thank God. <laughs> so you got clothes on your back. You guys have had some stuff, yes or no? Thank God. How many guys had breakfast this morning? Not because you want to pay the old diet and you skipped it, but how many guys had food in your fridge if you wanted to have it intermittent fasting? I, have, I don't eat till 2 o'clock, Pastor. That's not what I'm talking about. How many guys have food to eat this morning if you wanted to eat food? You guys are blessed than the majority, uh, a, a big portion of the world's population. And we have it because God's given it to us, okay? <laughs> There's something that I learned a long time ago. When it comes to stewardship, Everything that God has given us, we have to learn to handle properly, right? That's why the series is called Handle Your Business. You got to learn to handle. Nice watch. Is it yours? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, how do I answer this? <laughs> it's like the fear that God might ask it of me right now. No, he's, I'm not sure that's what's going to happen. But how many guys, guys, it's so easy for us to get caught up in what we have as if we own it. We don't own anything. This is a hard truth because our, our nature wants to keep hold of what we have. But God says it's all mine. When you understand that you are a steward and not an owner, it becomes easier to handle the things of life. Who do you think is more interested in, in your well-being? God. Who do you think is more interested in my kids living to see another day? God. I just have to handle it. I have, I have to be the one to manage it, but God's more interested in it. Guys, come, 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 ah, how do I even go here? I don't even know where to go with this. Man, when I got my wife, right? When I got my wife, because God gave her to me. Okay, not when I got her. I mean, you know what I mean? I did a little something, something, you know what I mean? But No, when I got my wife, when God gave me her, it's funny, I, I didn't ask for permission, but it's okay. It's about me. Don't worry, babe. She, gets, she always gets nervous when I bring her. It's about me this time. Don't worry. When we got married, okay, <laughs> crazy, funny story. Well, it wasn't funny for me. It was kind of actually nerve-wracking for me. Well, funny story, when we got married, uh, her, a lifelong friend of hers, a pastor friend of hers, who I had just come to met like in the past year at the time, was the one that married us, Okay. And most of the people who were at the wedding reception were, were, were people that, that grew up with her, that knew her. You understand? And so when we're standing at the altar, we're standing at the altar. It was, it was first of all, it felt to me like the longest marriage ceremony ever. Okay? It felt like 45 minutes of, of straight lecture to me. <laughs> yes or no? She knows it's true. Like straight lecture to me. It's like, you know that Laura is somebody special to us, right? Look around. There's more of us than there are of your people. <laughs> so you know she's special. And, and then he goes into the fact that you understand that the scripture says that the wife is the crown to her husband. So when we come back 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, and if we see nicks and dings and scratches, we're going to know how you treated your wife. I mean, this is at the wedding ceremony. I'm like, relax. We just get started, like. <laughs> but but it, the, the reality is, you know, I, I, although I felt truly beat up, and I wasn't sure whether I was going to say I do after the speech, you know, I was ready beforehand. But Lord, they scared me. It's like, why? Because if God's given to me, I've got to at some point give her back to God. And and the reality, what did I do with my marriage? You guys understand what I'm saying? I don't. I, I don't want to give back something that was beaten and bruised. You guys understand what I'm saying? If God give me a business, I don't want to give it back failed and bankrupt. I mean, you guys understand what I'm saying? If God's given me children, I don't, I don't want to give them back uh, discouraged and broken. I mean, you guys understand what I'm saying? I don't know about you guys, but all this week, I've been so convicted by last week, last week's message about making it grow. It's crazy. It's crazy. We've got to learn that we manage it, but he directs it. Everything in our life, he directs. Okay, we, but we have to handle it well because, again, we have to present it back to him. The same parable, 25, 19, Matthew. After a long time, the master of the servants returned and settled accounts with them. We're going to have to settle our accounts, guys. 
we handle it well because he owns it. He's the master. He's boss man. Amen? We got to settle that in our hearts. We own nothing. We own nothing. Who's more interested in, in you taking care of your house? God. Who's more interested in raising your family? God. We own nothing, but we handle it for his sake. Now, here's the beautiful thing, right? We do have the right to enjoy it because we talked about the teaching is called the master's delight. So once we understand who owns it all, then we talk about his delight. What did he say to the faithful servants? Faithful, well done, faithful servant. And to come and share in what? In the master's in delight. Yeah, no, the master's joy. We just changed it to delight. But in the master's happiness, in the master's joy, in the master's delight, right? Why? How many of you guys understand that God wants us to enjoy life? He wants us to be content in every situation. And, I, and, I, and I'm sorry if maybe your life has not been content. This is what we need to learn. When we look at examples in Scripture, Paul was in jail and he was content. Because it was not about his circumstance. It was not about his situation. It was about his relationship. Amen? We got to learn to be content. Help me out here, Max. But here's the reality. When we can share in his joy, we have the right to enjoy. 1 Timothy 6, 17. Look at this. Command those who are rich in the present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth. Can we just say for a second, you have the opportunity to be rich? Because there's a, there's, a, there, there's a doctrine out there that says you can't have wealth. No, you can have wealth if you know how to handle it right. You got it? I'm ta- I'm so- I, I don't believe in that you can't have some. No, you can have some stuff. And the more likely that you handle your stuff well, the more stuff you're going to have. We just read in the parable of the talents. We've got to take care of what God's given us. Command those who are rich in the present world not to be arrogant nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Why does he richly provide us with things? For our enjoyment. Why, why do you think when these guys did well, he said, now come, and, and enjoy sharing your master's happiness. God has a desire for you to live a life that is joyful. He's got a desire for you to live a life that is content. If he didn't, he wouldn't say that in his presence there is a fullness of joy. I know that every day we struggle with this because, you know, man, I'm not feeling joy. Maybe we're not putting our hope and our trust in him. Because when we steward what he's given us, it gives us the right when we do it well to enter in his joy which begs the question it makes me think maybe we don't have joy because we're not handling our business properly because if we handle it well we share in the master's joy is anybody hearing me so if we don't have joy the question is are we handling it well are are, are we are we doing what we need to be doing Are, are we living the purpose that god calls us to live I, I, at the end of the last service, we were praying for the spirit of frustration. Throughout this whole week, God's been revealing to me. There are people who are frustrated because they're not handling their business. They're not handling their business well. Because when we do, what do we do? We share in the master's joy. My prayer is that we would have a conviction to understand that God owns it all. We manage it, but he directs it. But the cool part about it is God's not a selfish God like, yeah, I'm going to enjoy this. Like, I'm going to sit back and relax, and I'm going to be cool while everybody does what they got. No. He's like, we're all going to have joy together. You're going to share in my joy. But how many of you guys understand, with every privilege comes responsibility. We can't expect the joy if we don't do what we got to do. Let me make it more practical. I can't expect uh, to have a good marriage, which we do, if I don't do what I got to do as a husband, if I don't handle my business. I can't expect that to just come. It's not Amazon, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't just show up the next day because I ordered it. If you got a Prime account, of course. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll be three days later. <laughs> Some of y'all ain't subscribed to either or. How many of you guys understand what I'm saying? I can't, I, you know, one of, one of the things in my season is, you know, as, as the kids get older, so you got to figure out different ways to relate to them. I'm like, Lord, 
only your revelation will do for me now. How many guys understand? We got to learn to handle our business. And I'm going to tell you this right now. If he says, if you handled your business well, come and share in the master's joy, in the master's delight. If we are not, and I'm not saying you're not, but if we are not enjoying the joy of the master, can we look back and say, maybe it's because I'm not handling things well. Can we be honest with ourselves? Who doesn't, who, well, let me say this because I was about to confuse you guys. How many of you guys want joy in your lives? I'm not saying you don't have it, but how many of you guys want it? I think this is a pretty universal truth. We all want joy in our lives, yes or no? How does it come? Handle your business well. It's as simple as that. Handle your business. There's something, there's something that, that, that's so powerful that, that we get to enjoy what God's given us, but there's also something that's so much more powerful. I'm, I'm grateful that I get to enjoy the things that God gives us. But when you get to a certain level in your walk, enjoying the things that God gives you is just not enough. It, the, the goal doesn't become the joy for me. The joy then becomes the joy, or the goal then becomes the joy for him. Let me explain this. There's something about the master's delight that moves me now. Didn't always move me. Before, what moved me was, was, was my, my own needs, my own joy, my own I don't want to say selfishness because I think we're all selfish to some degree. But before what moved me was just, you know, doing what I had to do, what, what pleased me, what moves me, what, you, you understand? But, but, but now what moves me is not what moves me because of me. I don't know if that made sense. <laughs> Sometimes I see something like, I got to replay that back for myself. It didn't, didn't, didn't come out well. How many guys? But, but, but there has to be a place where you get to. Where what moves you is not your own joy, but what moves you is something about the master's delight. Something about daddy's delight. Something about making daddy proud. Something about making daddy in heaven happy. We got to get to that place where that's what moves us. That I'm doing what God wanted me to do. That you know what, Lord, here's my family. It wasn't always perfect, but man, they're there. Look. My wife still smiles every now and then. No, every day. Every day. But look, my kids, they're still happy to be part of this family. See, Lord, there's something about the Father's... De- man, I don't know if we're getting this, man. There's something about making the Father happy. There's something about the Master's delight. It's no longer just about us, guys. When you come to know the Lord, it's no longer just about you. There's a song, I don't remember what song it is, but, but I'm sorry for, 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 for making it something that it wasn't. Uh, heart of Worship, who said it? Come on, coach. Come on. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. I'm sorry, Lord, for making it, I can't even sing it now, but something that it wasn't. It's, I, I can say yesterday, so we're, we're, we're hanging out. I'm hanging out with my youngest daughter. She wakes up early. She's like, Dad, I want to shoot arrows. Okay, cool. Let's go shoot arrows. We got an archery set and whatnot. So she's going, right? And, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I normally do on a Saturday morning, which is trying to get in the Lord to be able to hear something, to say something, to prepare or finish preparing what, I, what I'm trying to say today. And so I'm halfway between watching her, halfway between, you know, reading and, and listening and worshiping. And she, and she said, Dad, did you see that? Did you see that? I'm like, yeah, I I caught it. I kind of halfway caught it. And it was almost as if she was crying out for daddy's approval. I don't even understand what I'm saying. There's just something about pleasing the father that brings joy to the child. See, it's not about our delight. It's about the master's delight. I I, I believe that that might be hard for some people to get right now. Because we're still in that level where it's about me. I'm still looking for mine and I get it. That's understandable. But there's something about getting to that next level where you can look up. And when you see him smiling down upon you, it's a whole nother level. It's a whole nother level. Because how many of you guys understand? Just like those of us, maybe, maybe you had your father and you had your father's approval. Maybe you had your father, but there was no relationship with your father. Or maybe you just didn't even have your father. Maybe, maybe this is a foreign concept to us. But there's something 
about having a master's delight, about his approval. At the end of the day, how many of you guys remember the teaching from a couple weeks back? What's the goal? The glory is still his goal. The glory is still his goal. John 15, 18. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. What's to his glory? That we would bear much fruit, showing ourselves to be his disciples. That is the glory that he wants. He wants us to bear much fruit. He wants us to make it grow. He wants us to handle it well. He wants us to be good stewards. He wants you to handle your business. He wants you to be able to have something to show for what you've done in this life. For whatever he's given you. You say, well, Pastor, he hasn't given me much. But what have you done with the little? Because he says, put you in little, but you'll be in much. We want the much, but we don't know how to handle the little. My prayer is that we would be stirred up to be able to bear fruit, to handle our business. How we handle our business is the evidence of God's goodness. Let me say that again because somebody needed to hear that. How we handle our business is the evidence of God's goodness. In more religious terms, our stewardship bears witness. Let me explain this. So we live the benefits, but he gets the glory. Guys, if God is getting the glory, it means we're doing something right. Because if we're bearing fruit, and this is to my Father's glory that we would bear much fruit, if we're bearing fruit and He's getting glory, it means we're doing something right. The glory is still the goal. If God's getting the glory, we're doing something right. And if I'm doing something right, I probably enjoy doing it right. Again, I, I like to go back to my wife. If my wife is happy, you better believe I'm happy. Yes or no? If my kids are happy, you better believe I'm happy. Yes or no? And if we're doing what's right, if we're bearing fruit in that area, man, if, if this church is going in the right direction, you better believe we're going to enjoy it. But you better believe also that God's going to be pleased by it. Yesterday, man, at the beach, it was, it was funny because when we, when we set up at the beach, it was like it was not like, hey, we're gonna get there at sunrise. There's gonna be nobody on the beach. We're gonna it's gonna be so serene. It's gonna be all to ourselves. It's, no, we get there and people are partying and people are drunk and people are smoking. We know because we was waiting for a minute. Like, Woo, we can't stand in this spot for too long. Gotta keep on moving. Yes or no? Yes, yes or no? <laughs> Look at not not these like yeah, we were there a little too long. Shame on you. Shit, the old self was coming up. <laughs> Lord <of> mercy. <laughs> so we get there, right? And it's just like there's, there's so many people there. The spring break here in South Florida at the time of, of, of this particular, of today, right? Uh, I'm, I'm saying that for the benefit of who might watch this a year from now, right? Uh, it would still be technically spring break, a month from now. Anyway, so, so we're at the beach, and it's like we could have done it early in the morning, and we did it like, what I thought, there wasn't supposed to be nobody there. It's been a long time since I've been to the beach. It was like everybody was there. And so we had a predestined spot. We went to the predestined spot, and there were still a lot of people there. But it was just a beautiful thing because afterwards I was talking to somebody, uh, and, and we were like, man, yeah, you know, maybe we should get a separate space and do it, you know, a different time. I was like, yeah. But I don't think God would have gotten all the same glory that he got. You understand? Because while we were out there, for those of you guys who were there and who, who were participating, while we were out there, we were in a circle and we started worshiping. It was just a, a small worship session, but if you didn't catch it, people around us were standing off of their, off of their beach chairs and started worshiping with us. It wasn't planned, but God got the glory. And I'm sure there was people like, what are those people doing? It doesn't matter. They saw something maybe they hadn't seen. An army of believers coming out to worship. What, what am I trying to say here, guys? Yeah, you know, at this point, I don't even know what I'm trying to say right now. But as we steward, right, as we handle our business, there is increase, there is betterment, there is preservation when we handle it, and when we do what we got to do, when we bear fruit according to God's will, there, the master is pleased, and there's something about making the master happy, something about making Daddy happy. Let me ask you that. What's our goal, man? The goal is still the glory. 
when you handle your business, people's lives are changed, starting with your own. Do we see how important it is to handle our business, guys? That we need to ask for forgiveness if we've not handled our business well. Amen? But how many guys are saying that God is still faithful?